Okay, so we talked about reflexes, um, which are involuntary movement, and that is um, just a reaction to a stimulus. Um, and now we're going to talk about voluntary movement, which is intentional um, and it's um, involves decision making and problem solving and is controlled by um, the higher brain um, and the cortex of the brain. And so voluntary movement is movement that I choose to do, I willingly partake in. And um, it starts from the head and it moves down the body. So cephalocaudal means, um, cephalo means head. So cephalo head to caudal is bottom actually. So if you think about when you coddle a baby, you pat them on the bottom. So head to tail. So head to, to feet is the progression of um, voluntary movement in the, the infant. So they first learn to control their head. And that's why when you hold a baby, they tell you to be real careful with their head, especially the newborns, right? And then within the first month or so, they're starting to learn how to control their head better and you don't have to be as concerned about it. Now you're supporting the rest of their body. Then they learn to su support their body and to sit upright. Now you're making sure that they don't fall over. So um, you, can, you can literally watch the development, the cephalocaudal development in the infant if you're around babies. Um, and so as voluntary movement um, begins, reflexes start to disappear. We start to inhibit those reflexes in favor of voluntary movement. So we said that the cortex is um, responsible for voluntary movement, right? And there's different areas. These um, colors represent the four lobes of the brain. So which area is the most important for movement? Do you know? Have you heard? Do you know any misconceptions maybe? Um, because I've got to tell you, the whole brain is important for movement. So you may have, um, like particularly these areas along the central sulcus are um, thought to be mainly involved in sensation and movement, the, the primary um, control centers. Um, but the cerebellum is also important for coordination and this area the occipital cortex is important for vision, and we know that movement is difficult without vision, so that has to be integrated together. And the parietal lobe and the temporal lobe are important for sensory sensations, and so we know that has to be integrated with our motor control to decide what to do. And this area in blue is important for strategy and decision making and problem solving. So all of the parts of the brain work together. The final signal might come from one area or another, but they are all communicating, all working together to produce voluntary movement. So if you have damage to any of these areas of the brain, you're going to see, um, they're going to see some out, some symptoms of that in movement of the person. This is, if you were to cut, so remember I said the central sulcus, which is this line here, these areas along here, if you were to cut a slice separating front and back, this is what you would get is the homunculus. And I believe this is the motor homunculus. And so it's showing how many, um, how much area of that piece of cortex is devoted to each part of the body. And so you'll see that the image is a little distorted because some areas of the body get more space and more allocation than others. So your hand, it's a larger, much larger section than your elbow and your foot, right? And your eyes, your nose, your face gets a lot bigger section than your trunk or neck or head or shoulder or arms, right? So you need to think about um, why would that matter for just a minute? Why would your hand or your face um, get a bigger proportion of the, the cortex than the other parts of your body? And this is kind of leading into a future chapter. Well, what kind of movement is mostly done with uh, the fingers and the face versus the hand, the, the foot and the elbow, right? The foot and the elbow are very gross movement. They don't have to be very precise. They can be, have a large variability and still be accurate, still be successful. Um, whereas 
movement of the fingers and hands have to be very precise, right? They're very small, tiny movements. Um, if you miss picking up a pin by a millimeter, you're not gonna pick it up, right? So they have to be more precise, and so there's more control devoted to movements in the, the hand and the face because of those reasons, right? It has to be very precise, so we have more, um, more area of the brain devoted to control of those movements. They also use smaller muscles, and so we'll talk more about um, differences in fine and gross motor control um, in chapter 11.